Hello everyone, this is Pal Ponder on Weather. In this update, we're going to be talking about a tropical wave in the Caribbean that looks to possibly develop and get into the Gulf of Mexico by late next weekend. So if you do like weather-related content, please subscribe to my channel as I will upload daily updates to keep you ahead of the storm. So let's get right to it. Good morning, everyone. Uh, this is your June 5th update on Saturday. As you can see, here's the latest update from the Climate Prediction Center. Let me draw your attention to the area of in green. This is the highlighted from June 5th today all the way through the 8th. And that's that upper level low that's going to be impacting a lot of the Gulf states in around uh, Houston, Corpus, down to Louisiana, and to Arkansas, with a lot more rainfall just over the next several days. But as we get into the 9th, Time frame that tropical wave that we highlighted several days ago this, uh, the climate prediction center has now increased their chance from a moderate risk to a high risk for possible tropical storm development this would be after the ninth time frame getting into the middle of the month you can see down here in the caribbean where that uh, dark shaded red zone is this is the area of interest that we are looking at and even in the pacific here we have a storm that uh, looks to actually form again to a, the, the third name storm uh, of the season over the next uh, several days. So let me kind of walk you through. Here's the latest uh, JMA. This is the Japanese model. This actually comes out every Thursday. This is the latest from the June 2nd time frame. This is the fifth. So this is your three to nine day look. And what you're looking at is these areas in blue. We have what they call an enhanced MJO that's going to be moving across from the Pacific into the Atlantic and you can see these darker shaded blues here that's an indication of a little bit more a lot more upward rising motion air a little bit easier for a tropical storm to form in that type of an environment and that's actually the spot where we have an 80 percent chance of a tropical system in the Pacific that the National Hurricane Center has actually highlighted and if we move down to the 10th to 6th time frame you can definitely see those blues even get darker. And that's definitely an indication that you even have it in more enhanced and upward rising motion air and a lot easier for tropical storm development in that environment, or at least thunderstorms to start bubbling up uh, in the heat of the day. So yeah, there's that look for the, uh, the latest advisory as of this morning, as of 5 a.m., where that a little bit of enhancement on the uh, the upward rising motion air, that is the 80% chance of our third name storm of the season already it looks to take shape into uh, the central uh, the, in the Pacific on the eastern side over here. So that's already been you know a pretty active season already. I mean, the season just started on the 15th, so we're less than you know two and a, two and a half weeks in, and we're already looking at our our third storm uh, of the season. So let me walk you through the latest uh, vertical motion velocity index. Here's the, the zero to five day look between now and June 10th timeframe. So in the beginning, we're gonna be dealing with that upper level low, and this is the latest, uh, the Weather Prediction Center highlighted that risk of a marginal risk of a excessive rainfall that's going into the, to today, the fifth, of uh, you know down here in Corpus, Victoria, Houston area, East Texas, a little bit higher amounts as we get into uh, you know southern southern Louisiana, say into Baton Rouge, into uh, you know into the Lake Charles area. A lot of these areas into say New Orleans area be hit with a little bit higher rainfall today, and even in tomorrow that in increased or that slight risk for excessive rainfall is parked itself over uh, Louisiana and Mississippi. And then, you know, a lot of the eastern, you know, a lot of East Texas and the southern states are going to be impacted from, look, that darker blue here, that is your indication of that little bit, a little bit easier upward rising motion air. So as we walk you through and take you through the 10th to the 15th time frame, you can see that enhancement of the MJO is out of the Pacific now. That's going to be aligning itself over the Atlantic. And, and that's why... You know, the Climate Prediction Center has actually highlighted that high risk of possible tropical storm development in the Caribbean because we have a lot of upward rising motion air and these darker blues around the Yucatan uh, Peninsula here is an indication of where that tropical storm could potentially form 
uh, by then, but you can look and see, this is notice your attention too, off the African coast where these darker blues, this is kind of a rare feat to see this earlier on in the season off the main development region. Typically you don't see this, you know, till later on in the season, but yeah, obviously we have to watch this area as well for a possible tropical storm development as these African waves come off the coast, because that is a strong indication of a possible uh, trying to develop. Of course, we have a long time, if it does develop, to you know, watch that one. So let me take you through the next several days over the precipital water uh, index. This is the basically the amount of potential water in the atmosphere. And, and today, this is your fifth look. Uh, there's that enhancement of the darker reds. That's your indication of your two inch plus rainfall potential per hour getting into uh, you know Louisiana the typically the the yellows indicate about a one inch so if a storm happens to get over your region that's the atmosphere that's the potential you know available water in the atmosphere that could potentially rain in a given time frame over a course of an hour so yeah these darker reds are an indication of where more enhancement could be that would be uh, you know today as we walk you through to the fifth time frame there's that tropical wave it just kind of meanders itself over you know central america these things take time to develop what they call central american gyra they just kind of fester this is june so it's not going to be quick to develop or anything like that this is just going to be over an extended period of time of a you know bubbling thunderstorms over a congealed area will eventually you know compound itself over time and then eventually try to get its act together and form into somewhat of a tropical system you know as we move forward as this continues to shift along the central american coastline here and this will be adding to some of the rainfall totals kind of throughout the week you know into the caribbean much of say jamaica into the into the cayman islands uh but you know but as we get into next weekend that's when we see a little bit higher indication of a little bit higher rainfall amounts as we go into next weekend as it pulls in some of that deep tropical moisture as that wave will really start to enhance the mjl will be fully over the atlantic by then with an enhanced feature a lot of that upward rising motion so yes that is when you're looking at a stronger indication of some higher rain amounts getting into next weekend time frame this would be your saturday june the 12th getting into Jamaica, getting into the Cayman Islands, along the Yucatan. So this is, you know, getting into summertime here. So a lot of these people, you know, you have you have uh, vacations planned in Cancun, Cozumel, uh, a lot of these areas down here in the Caribbean. So I wanted to let you know of this potential, uh, you know, storm that could potentially be forming in that, you know, after that June 10th time frame going into the middle of June down here in this region. So as, as we can move move forward there's your 14th look you can definitely see not the reds anymore now we're getting some of the purples that is your deep tropical moisture that is the area that's that what you know they say they you know put that high confidence of storm development by then and this would merge so we have a storm uh the potential activity in the in the pacific as well as this potential activity in the atlantic and a lot of the indication are starting to come together where we could have a little bit more of a crossover effect merging in from the Pacific into uh, the Southern Gulf of Mexico. And this, all that tropical moisture would merge into the Southern, Southern Gulf, more likely into the Bay of Campeche, uh, coming in and with some extreme rain amounts over Cancun by then, Cozumel, a lot of those areas would be impacted heavily uh, from this system, but we're not talking until late next weekend. This could be potentially, you know, getting into the southern Gulf, Gulf of Mexico. Because if you take a look at the latest uh, EPS probability guidance, this is from your 11th through 13th time frame, you can definitely see that highlighted area of that MJO moving across from the Pacific to the uh, to the Atlantic side. Right, we have a little bit higher indication for that tropical storm development. Uh, even another one could be forming, not talking the one that's going to be forming, you know, that third name system. This could be your fourth name system potentially possibly forming out by then because this is already a 70% chance of possible uh, tropical storm development. But all this area down here and under the Central American side 
would, would more likely merge into the southern gulf as we move forward there's your look on the uh, vertical uh, vorticity index on the latest european model by the 14th by the 15th time frame yeah it has an indication where we could have a a, a swirl in the low you know you know deep down here in the southern gulf emerging off the yucatan and crossing over from the pacific side because if we zoom in by the time we get into the middle of the month from that 15th time frame yeah and it has that indication where we could see a tropical system possibly trying to form into the southern gulf now a lot of these features will you know more or less be a heavy rainmaker i don't foresee this to be a big wind event coming out of this particular system but it's the compounding effect of a lot of rainfall that's happened over the texas coastline over the louisiana coastline over the southern states just over the last five to six weeks and i'll show you some of these rainfall amounts are really impressive and uh, there's been a lot of flooding rain so that is the main concern with this particular system is your enhanced rainfall and a compounding effect of what's happening over the last month or two in a lot of these areas and if with a weak system it would be more or less sheared so you definitely have to look on the east side of this system and because mo most of these are east side weighted and it would be kind of you know wind shearing effects so anywhere as long as the coast don't don't pay attention where it could potentially make landfall at because a lot of these areas along the coast could still pick up a lot of rain as we go into uh the middle of the month so here's the latest uh, gfs model on the spaghetti models look yeah it basically implies by the time we get into the 15th of the month you know we're talking 10 days from now a lot of this will take its sweet time to get it, get it together but a lot of indications all this is kind of merging together and kind of coming together as we could be looking at some low pressure into the gulf of mexico by then and and then then that would you know again going forward so here's your uh european look on the uh the spaghetti models Here's your some of your rainfall totals just but up for it's May 1st. So let me read these out. In San Antonio, down here in the south, we're talking seven inches. You know, we normally pick up four. Austin, 15 inches. We normally pick up four. Houston, 16 inches. Victoria, we're talking almost two feet of rainfall. This is just between May 1st and June 3rd time frame. Uh, McAllen, that's a dry climate. We're talking 14 inches of rain down here in the southern southern Texas. Uh, Lake Charles, Louisiana, 20 inches of rainfall. That's an extreme amount of rainfall over a short period of time, just basically in the month of May. And here's New Orleans, 13 inches. Here's Shreveport. So this is through the third. And then I showed you what all the rain's going to ha be happening from that upper level low system just between now and the eighth and the ninth time frame and a lot of these same areas and then then we have to start looking at the caribbean for that another compounding effect from this particular system and here's the latest uh, eps guidance of 10 days from now going from the european model on the 15th a lot of the guidance would have this deep tropical type moisture starting to merge back into the gulf of mexico and would, would send waves of energy waves of rain down to the texas coastline to the louisiana coastline along these southern states and mississippi alabama even the florida panhandle is out of the question as this would be sheared across so a lot of these areas into the texas coastline will have to pay, pay attention to this Especially if you live along the coast, because this is going to be taking its time. It's going to be building over a compounding time frame and getting, getting deep tropical moisture with it. And once that hits the Gulf, a lot of these areas have already hit 78, 80 degrees. Some of these areas, 85 degree water temperature. That's plenty of fuel to keep this alive, especially with an active, you know, positive uh, MJO with an enhancement by that time frame. Yeah, that's going to be pulling in a lot of deep tropical moisture to the southern states and along the coastline as we go into uh the middle of the month so hey i appreciate you guys uh watching uh do like this video definitely leave your comments below and don't forget to subscribe to my channel to catch the latest update where i protect you before and after the storm